For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney, and it's a pleasure to welcome Kardik from Intel today to talk to us a little bit about Open RAN and Ethernet connectivity. So first of all, thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation with me. Oh, the pleasure is mine, Sean. Thank you, and thanks to the RCR Wireless team. So Open RAN, obviously a really hot topic right now, and really an important topic when you think about some of the concurrent trends that are really uh, shaping how telecom operators think about, deploy, and manage their networks. But let's maybe start at the beginning, Kardik. How does Open RAN benefit communication service providers in terms of, of Ethernet and connectivity? Oh, yeah. I'll definitely uh, second what you just said. It's an exciting time to be part of uh, Open RAN and and uh, being part of Intel's Ethernet group, I can tell you that it's a very exciting time to be associated with connectivity in general. Um, and Open RAN, by definition, requires any part of the technology or, uh, that touches its deployment model and strategy do, by definition, be open. And Ethernet uh, is one of those connectivity technologies that has been uh, a standard uh, for the over 40 years. Uh, I think uh, Intel's been uh, providing products in this space for over 40 years ourselves. And uh, so the the ubiquity that Ethernet has uh, shown is a big value add because uh, availability of technology, familiarity of technology is extremely important and is a critical component intrinsic to openness and open RAN as an extension. Uh, so by, by definition of being around uh, for that elongated period of time, uh, immediately allows for the total cost of ownership of or TCO of an Ethernet-based technology to be a lot more lucrative than uh, something that is, let's just say, proprietary or relatively nascent in its existence. Um, the, the, the availability, the TCO, and the, and the final point that I'll make is the, the flexibility of the technology as well, right? So let's just take the, uh, the sort of commercial off-the-shelf servers being available, and if you want to tune this for multiple density, if you want to tune this for uh, different speeds, if you want to do, tune this for different kinds of connectivity types, Ethernet has a plethora of options that allows the customers, whether it's the, the, the server uh, OEMs or the ODMs or the end customers, the operators or the infrastructure providers, uh, it allows each one of them to, to pick and choose which flavor uh, and which uh, kind of deployment model they would like to receive and deploy Ethernet with. So uh, that's one of the big uh, advantages of having a technology like Ethernet be the connectivity choice because it's of its feature richness, because of its TCO benefits, and because of its uh, availability. Yeah, you just made a, a really interesting comment that's super relevant to Open RAN, and I, I mean relevant to economics in general, but this balance of, of customization with scale, and I mean Ethernet, great option given its reliability, its availability, the costs associated with it, and the flexibility, the fact that you can customize your network while using this highly standardized, highly available uh, technology. So I think that's well said, but I, I wanna point out to our audience that this is an ongoing conversation we've been having with Intel. You joined me for a webinar a few weeks ago that I'd encourage everybody to go take a look at. Your colleague, Chris, was with us for the Open RAN Global Forum, which is also available on demand. I wanted to look at some of these kind of fundamental concepts of Open RAN that we have been discussing. You know, one of them, is that multi-vendor interoperability, it's got to be there and it's got to be rock solid to give operators the confidence to deploy at scale. So maybe you can talk to us a little bit about the ecosystem piece, how different parties have to work together to kind of coalesce around a, a model that really will facilitate commercialization while maintaining flexibility and, and kind of focus in on Ethernet for the RAN. Sure, Sean, and and uh, I'm glad that you asked the question because this is such a critical component for success for Open RAN um, that uh, a single vendor does not make an ecosystem, right? So you you got to have multiple vendors uh, participate, not just participate but collaborate. And I made this point the last time you had invited me that this is a, this ecosystem requires a lot of collaboration and collaboration not just in terms of interoperability but collaboration in terms of joint development. And this is where I'll, I'll go back to what I said a few minutes ago, which is the, the fact that Intel has been uh, around for the last 40 plus years uh, naturally lends itself to, to the available kind of technology components already being, for the most part, interoperable, not just with the ecosystem partners, but compliant with standards. So the 802.3 standard in general 
has been the the north star for everything that has got to do with ethernet and the advancements that ethernet has made along the way and now with the advent of ran or open ran 5g obviously also has stringent technology requirements that it uh, that it lays on on connectivity also uh, so and and then associated with that there are standards body that govern and uh, and kind of uh, put compliance requirements for these kind of uh, technology components that come as part of Ethernet. The ITU standards body, as an example, makes sure that uh, anything that is to do with timing uh, as, as from a vendor like us complies and is interoperable with the other parts of the ecosystem. We also kind of go back to some of the traditional Ethernet uh, uh, compliance and requirements interoperability check uh, bodies like UNH uh, that we always check our uh, Ethernet uh, uh, kind of features and, and, and performance compliance with. And the uh, EANTC, European Advanced Network uh, Test Center, that is also a, a, a body that we kind of have our products test against to make sure that those stringent requirements that our operators, our end users have uh, are met. And then finally, our ecosystem partners, whether it's the server OEMs, the ODMs, the independent software vendors, the ISVs, test uh, vendors, integrators, cables, switches, uh, we uh, modules, uh, we do a stringent compliance and interoperability check across all of these different components and vendors in the ecosystem just to enable uh, a, our customers to have uh, a, a flexibility in their deployment and availability in their deployment when it comes to RAN. Yeah, it's been really exciting to see that interoperability piece really be hardened and then put into the field. And, it, you know, it seems like it's it's well in hand and, you know, commercial ready, not, not really my call because I'm not building a network, but we are seeing these networks be built at increasing scale, which gives me a lot of confidence. And a lot of the conversations I'm having are really turning towards cultural conversations, you know, so you've, you've taken an open standard and you've put it into product but now you need an open culture and a new kind of mindset to really turn that into innovation. So maybe you can just tell me how you're thinking about that. Well, I think Intel in general uh, is fostering an open culture and it uh, is not specific to just this area of connectivity or this area of open RAN. Uh, whatever we've been doing, we're as a company, as an organization, uh, we, we are big proponents of open source. Uh, and uh, this this area is no exception. Uh, we are a founding member of the Linux Foundation, as an example. We are uh, we are a we are a member of over seven hundred different open source foundations or standards bodies as of today. And uh, what and and this is kind of a guiding principle for things that we do, the code that we write, uh, that we have to develop and contribute. Uh, to these uh, bodies, uh, so to speak, whether it's the whether it's the kernel or org uh, body, or whether it's the different distributions across various other forms of driver uh, distribution models that exist, uh, we contribute to the Linux PTP project uh, uh, as an example for for open RAN support. Uh, for Sync E, we are contributing, and not just contributing, but we're benefiting from contributions from other uh, vendors that uh, that do the same for us. Right. So it's in general, it's it's a what you would expect from a community. Uh, we, we are part of an ecosystem. The ecosystem can thrive only if uh, everybody has a nice little symbiotic rela relationship in here in this ecosystem. And uh, as a company, as an organization, I'm proud to be part of Intel because we, we live that culture. That is part of our DNA. Well, that's really exciting to, to hear that from you, given the central role that, that Intel plays in this ecosystem. So I, I guess maybe last question here, Kardik, when you think about the trajectory Open RAN is on, all the work Intel's doing within this ecosystem, not just to create partnerships, but to just foster the expansion of it and bring in new players and new ideas, what do you see in the future for Ethernet and the radio access network? Oh, I, I think we're just getting started. Uh, every time there is a killer application or a technology or a deployment model that shows up like this, it's exciting when it's a marriage of technologies uh, like this. Uh, if you take uh, what's what's going on next, uh, 6G as an example, right? So we can, so we can already see some of those uh, gears in motion right now in terms of what are the different levels of stringent uh, timing requirements that that's gonna lay on us. Uh, what do we expect uh, in terms of the different offloads or protocols that we need to accelerate uh, so that the next generation users 
can benefit from uh, connectivity not being the bottleneck in, in this level of deployment. Uh, of course, no meeting or interview is complete without saying AI, Sean, as I'm sure you know. And so uh, oh, why not benefit from AI, whether it's uh, intelligent beam forming, whether it's spectral efficiency, whether it's uh, predictive maintenance. There are so many different areas in which neural networks can help accelerate uh, and, and, and improve and optimize the, the way uh, RAN and open RAN deployments happen. And as a component of, of that deployment being connectivity, uh, we are not uh, uh, immune to that either, right? We, we, we are excited about having AI and these other 6G and protocol uh, offload and acceleration requirements uh, be part of what we offer. And, uh, and then I can tell you that uh, that's part of what we're thinking about already. All right. So the best is yet to come. That's really good to hear. And um, I just want to circle back one more time for our audience, tell you to check out the webinar that Kartik joined us for. That's available on rcrwireless.com. Intel's participation in the Open RAN Global Forum. Uh, in addition to your colleague, Chris, we were also joined by Christina Rodriguez, and we took a deep dive into bringing artificial intelligence out into the RAN. That's a really interesting session. And Kartik, it's always good to catch up with you. So I really appreciate the time that you took today to have this conversation and share your perspective with our audience. Yeah, likewise, Sean. Thanks for having me. 